break, my boyfriend broke up with me on our one year anniversary. So I did what any girl would do. I ate a lot of ice cream, drank a lot of vodka, and watched a lot of Netflix. And I got hooked on one show in particular, Criminal Minds. Don't want to brag, but I watched about five seasons over break. And not only did this show make me terrified to ever leave my house, but it also opened up my eyes to a new topic I had never really thought about before, serial killers. And through more extensive research, I've learned the history of serial killers, the different types, and what drives them to commit such tragic acts. So in his 2004 book, Serial Killers, The Method of Monsters and Madness, Peter Vronsky explains how the term serial killers originated in 1974 by FBI agent Robert Wessler. That's him right there. And so he heard the, the, these crimes being described as serial killers, and which means like occurring multiple times. And it reminded him of a show he used to watch growing up called Serial Adventures. And in particular, he recalled how this show always left on like a cliffhanger and it increased the tension of his viewers and he related it to how serial killers feel after their crimes. Each one makes it then more excited for the next. So he coined the term serial killers. The most famous serial killer was Jack the Ripper and he was known as the first modern day serial killer. That's um, him. He killed five prostitutes in London in 1888 and then simply vanished. There was over 80 books written about him with different theories of who he could be, but his identity was never discovered. Rowan McWilliam described in his 2017 article, London's Border Country, how a letter was sent to a news agency, and it was said to be written by the murderer, and he signed it Jack the Ripper, and that's how Jack the Ripper got his name. And that's the letter that was sent to uh, the news place. So as Lewis wants to Wattis put it in The Social Nature of Serial Killers this year, there are two distinct types, organized and disorganized. Organized killers are extremely intelligent and meticulous. They leave little to no evidence, making them really hard to catch. And they tend to stalk their victims for days and use as ploys to gain their trust, such as like, oh, my car broke down, or you know, help me find my dog, you know, stuff like that. And they're extremely proud of their work and stay to stay, uh, tend to stay involved in their crimes through like news or social media. And also there's disorganized killers and they do not plan out their murders. They're more like crime of opportunities and their victims are simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. They tend to have extremely low IQs and be really antisocial with no friends or family. And some of, some of them even claim to have no recollection of their deeds and are um, said to be influenced by voices in their head. And so here's like just a, more distinctions between them. So obviously they're pretty much exact opposites in life. So lastly, um, why do they commit such terrible acts? So first we have thrill seekers. And these people just love to outsmart law enforcement and they also love the attention that their crimes receive. They tend to be extremely organized and hard to catch. Next, we have mission-oriented. They believe that they are doing society a favor by getting rid, by ridding it of certain people. Some examples are like for racist reasons, uh, sexist reasons, stuff like that. These killers are actually not psychotic. Um, they truly believe that what they're doing is right and they're actually benefiting society. And they're very controlled and careful with their crimes. And next we have visionary killers, and these are the ones that suffer psychotic breaks from reality. They believe that they live in a different dimension, that they're different people, or that they're actually getting talking to like God or the devil. In one instance, a man thought uh, the devil was talking to him through his neighbor's dog, telling him to like kill people. So they're kind of crazy, um, and they're uh, really unorganized, so it makes them like easier to catch than other killers. And next. We have power and control killers, and these ones I like to call like the psychos because they kind of enjoy the terror that their crimes cause. They enjoy the screaming, like the pleading for mercy kind of stuff, and they're very organized. And these killers usually have experienced um, a large amount of childhood abuse or just hardships in their childhood, and it's left them powerless, feeling powerless and worthless. 
And so in their adult life, they compensate for this by gaining, gaining power and control over their victims. And lastly, in 2014, Sergio Canavero explained in this article, Criminal Minds, how most serial killers actually have damage to their frontal lobes. Uh, that's like the green area shaded in that picture. And the damage to their frontal lobes uh, results in a lack of empathy, reasonable thinking, and self-control. And so most serial killers, um, when investigated, actually have damage to that part of their brain, and it could be a cause of their acts. So serial killers have been around since the beginning of time, but the idea of them, the term, and the psychology behind it has only really been basic knowledge for about 150 years. And while criminal minds may not be the best source of information, it's opened my eyes to a new topic to investigate and share with all of you. Thank you.